Hey, what's going on everyone? First, I'd like to say thank you for clicking on this video and joining me on this journey. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the power of our habits and how we can uh, create new habits and eliminate bad habits. So I wanna start with this quote from Aristotle and he says, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. And so I, I wanna talk about uh, habits in this video and how understanding the habit loop is going to help you to break a habit or form new healthy habits. And so I got this concept from uh, the book, The Power of Our Habits. This book is a little rough on the edges, but it's by Charles Duhigg. And uh, he goes to talk about the habit loop. And so understanding this habit loop is what's going to help you to create or eliminate uh, new habits and bad habits. So let's look at some of the three components that the habit loop has. Okay, the first component is the cue. The cue is your trigger. So the cue always precedes the behavior that is going to take place. The cue is also this connection um, that once it has a behavior, I'm sorry, once the cue is connected to the behavior and there's a strong connection where um, the behavior is ingrained in your brain, this is when you actually engage in the behavior without giving it a second thought, okay? So it, the cue is uh, what is going to make your brain begin to go in that automatic mode. So that cue is what triggers that. Uh, the second part of this loop is the routine. So the routine is what you do, what you feel, and what you think, all right? The third part of this habit loop is the reward. So what you get from the routine is the reward. So your brain decides that, you know, if the reward is satisfying enough to keep the habit or not, then it's going to, one, if it's satisfied enough to keep the habit, um, then that's when the habit forms. If the brain, if the reward is not satisfying enough, then the brain is going to kick it and you won't have that habit. So I'm just gonna give you an example of um, how I kind of use this habit loop when I was actually transitioning from being a meat eater to now a vegan. And uh, one of my cues for me, uh, when I was making that whole transition, uh, was hunger, right? So my cue was hunger. So anytime I was hungry, um, I would eat. I mean, right? Anybody would uh, eat, right? So I, I didn't have uh, necessarily like a, a diet that I followed because I basically ate everything. But once I made the decision to transition to veganism, uh, it was a struggle in the very beginning because one, I didn't have a plan. And two, I tried to like just dive into it. And it was just, you know, a disaster. And I, and I talk about that in the book that I uh, wrote about it. But um, when I, so let's take, for example, uh, some of my favorite things I like to eat. So I was a big cereal eater. Um, I like fried chicken. Um, I liked let's just stick with that so chicken let's let's take chicken for example so my trigger or my cue was hunger my routine was go and find something to eat like you know chicken and the reward was my hunger was satisfied i was no longer hungry um and so what i had to do when i was transitioning to veganism was recognize what my cue was so my cue was hunger my routine was go make some fried chicken or go buy some fried chicken. And my reward was, you know, my hunk, I didn't have hunger. So in order for me to change the way that I thought and that habit of, you know, eating those foods that logically I was trying to avoid eating, but the habit is what uh, kind of kicked me in the butt 
in the very beginning of it. So now I'm gonna talk about how to use this loop to change or eliminate those unwanted habits or help you to form those new habits. And I'm gonna tell you how I was able to, you know, transition once I break this down. So let's look at the first thing you wanna do when you're trying to create a new habit or eliminate a new habit. So the first thing you wanna look at is the cue. So first we wanna identify what the cue is. So the cue could be the time of the day that it occurs. Uh, think about where you are, you know, who are the people that you're around um, and what emotions are you feeling? So these are the things that are going to cue you or trigger you to have your brain go into that automatic mode. Okay, and then <clears throat> we're gonna skip over the routine because you wanna go to the reward and find out why it is that you are engaging in this behavior and why. So you wanna identify what that reward is. So what craving is this habit or routine that this habit is satisfying? So you wanna substitute um, another reward so is this craving actually gone you know once you find a substitute for that reward uh if it is gone then that could be what you're craving but if not then this is a part where you want to keep experimenting until you're able to find something that satisfies that urge so you really have to dig deep to find out uh, what it is that first is triggering triggering you so you have to really be aware of you know what you're feeling you know what time of the day is and also identify what you're getting out of it so really focus on what what am i satisfying so you you really have to dig deep when you're getting to that point of identifying the cue and the reward because eventually um our routine, which is the third thing that we're going to look at, is what's going to replace that behavior. So for example, your routine is what's going to replace that behavior. So for example, um, one idea could be, hey, you know, I want to make sure that I wake up on time and not snooze the alarm clock. Well, the cue is my alarm clock rings. My routine is I usually reach over and snooze the alarm clock. My reward is I'm able to do more of what I really want to do, which is sleep, which could be unproductive um, if you have things to do. Now, to change your uh, habit, uh, you go back to the habit loop and say, okay, my cue is um, the alarm clock goes off. My routine, now I'm gonna change my routine because my reward is, or my reward of sleeping is, you know, getting more done than I, I want to do. So if I know that that's my reward, then I know that my routine is gonna be my new plan. So what I'm gonna do, instead of having my alarm clock on the side of my bed, I'm gonna place it on the other side of the room so that when my cue goes off, I wake up, I hit my alarm clock off, I'm already up now and my reward is now I can get done what needs to be done which is more productive than you know sleeping when you have things to get done so that's one way that you can change that loop now for me when I switched to veganism um, and I wanted that fried chicken my cue was hunger and I had to change my whole routine so Rather than dismissing chicken completely, which I did, I found a new replacement, right? And that new replacement was oyster mushrooms. And these oyster, when I tell you that these oyster mushrooms have the texture of chicken, they taste like chicken. If you season it like you typically season your chicken, you're going to get uh, mock chicken, okay? So I changed, I looked at the ingredients, and I, I just changed my ingredients. So rather than using um, chicken, I used oyster mushroom, and I substituted my ingredients that I would typically make chicken with, whether it was fried or baked, 
and I would use the same seasonings and my reward was the same result. I got the same texture, my hunger was no longer there and I was satisfied. And so when you are doing your new routine, you wanna make sure you have a plan and be very specific about your plan. So you wanna have your plan by saying and completing this sentence. So when I blank, so you wanna put your cue there, whatever your trigger is. So when I wake up or when I feel hungry or when I you know, see a box of donuts, I will, you're gonna replace it with your new routine. I will, and you wanna be very specific. So let's say for example, if you want to spend less time on social media, you don't wanna just say, I will, so when I get on my phone, I will spend less time on social media. You wanna be very specific. So when I get on my phone, I will click on, you know, my book app, right? So you first wanna find out why, why you get on social media so much. If it's for novelty or if it's, you know, to uh, converse with friends, then replace that behavior with a telephone call or a text message with a friend if that's what you want, if you want connection. So be very specific. Don't just say, you know, spend less time here or spend less time there. Replace it with another behavior because another factor of um, creating new habits is that, or creating new thoughts, is that they don't just disappear, right? They have to be replaced. So if you don't replace them, then it's very likely that the habit is going to continue until you find a replacement for it. So again, let's go back to that sentence. So have a plan. When I blank, I will blank. So when I, whatever the cue is, I will, whatever the new routine is, and be very specific with that routine. Uh, because it provides me with whatever your reward is so that's why it's important to know why you do what you do what what is it that you're craving or what is what urge is it satisfying when you're looking at those um, when you're looking at habits that you want to create or habits that you want to break so remember recognize why you engage in a certain habit and think about why it happens around the same time every day or in the same circumstance. Um, and then it'll be easier to form a new habit that's going to serve that same purpose. And so if we understand this habit loop and really put it to work, then you're going to see yourself creating new habits, eliminating bad habits, and hopefully you're able to help someone else do the same. So thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. Remember, you have what it takes. Be great and accelerate. Until next time, peace.